What's up guys, I'm Greg, this is the Car Passion Channel, and you're watching episode 10 of Broke and Boosted. In this video, I'm going to be addressing a procedure that you need to follow if you're boosting your Miata on the stock ECU. Now, I've been getting a lot of questions lately. Am I going to mega score Broke and Boosted? And the answer is no, I am going to run the stock ECU. Now, what I recommend is if you're boosting your car, and it's going to be a long-term project, you're going to own the car for a while, just save up the money and go with Mega Squirt up front. It'll be better in the long run. The car will be more reliable. It'll be more powerful. It's really just overall a better choice for a Miata Turbo build. But this is broken boosted. We're trying to get the car boosted for as cheaply as possible while still maintaining some level of reliability. So let's get into it. And what I'm going to be installing today is a very simple part, very basic, but it's very important for drivability of running a turbocharger with a stock ECU. That part is called an O2 signal modifier or an O2 sensor clamp, otherwise known. Let me break it down for you. Today's third grade artwork is brought to you by yours truly. You have your exhaust system. Your exhaust system has an O2 sensor in it, which lets the ECU know if the engine is running rich or lean. You also have your airflow meter on the 1.6. If you have a 1.8, it's a MAF, a mass airflow sensor. It's also connected to the ECU to let it know how much air it's getting. Now during idle and cruise, your ECU operates in what's known as closed loop. And what that means is it's using the sensor to try to maintain an air to fuel ratio that's 14.7 to one. When the AFM starts to see more airflow during high load and high RPM conditions, the ECU goes into what's called open loop. You need the engine to run more rich to be safe when you're in a high load condition. So open loop, the engine is gonna run much more rich, anywhere from 13.5 to 11.5 to one, depending on your setup. So why the heck does all of this matter? Well, all these stock components were never designed to see boost. So what can happen is, as the car goes into boost, it might not have enough airflow to trigger the ECU to go into open loop. So you can run lean and it can be a dangerous condition, but it's mostly about drivability. The car will start to stumble just as you cross over into boost. That's where the O2 signal modifier comes in. The O2 signal modifier intercepts the signal to the ECU. So during normal cruise conditions and idle, it's still gonna remain connected, but here's where it's different. This O2 signal modifier also has a vacuum line. And this is gonna start getting real ugly. Connected to the intake. As soon as it goes into positive pressure above zero PSI, it opens the switch and breaks the connection from the O2 sensor to the ECU automatically sending it into open loop and you'll start receiving extra fueling immediately upon going into boost. So where can you get one of these O2 signal modifiers from? Well, you can get one from Flying Miata and they're about $124. MiataTurbo.net, there's a guy on there that makes a homebrew version. I think it's around $90 or so. I decided to go extreme budget on mine. I found this. This is just a standard, I believe it's called a pressure switch or maybe a transducer. But anyways, the point of it is, when it sees pressure, it either breaks a connection or makes a connection. That's why there's three prongs and I have to figure out which one's which. But you can listen to it. As I blow into it, anything over zero PSI, it's gonna break that connection to the O2 sensor and send the ECU into open loop mode, which is exactly what we want. So I'm gonna take my digital multimeter, set it to measure ohms, and I'm gonna hook the prongs up to these pins and blow into this thing and figure out which pin is which. Now I know this is the common, but I have to figure out which one of these pins is gonna give me an open switch under pressure. So that's an open switch there. And that is closed. Now when I blow into the vacuum port, it becomes an open circuit. I'll have a link in the description below of where I bought this, but please keep in mind that I've never used one of these before, and it could melt or something the first day I use it, or it, it could break or, or something like that, so just know that I'm not gonna be held liable for some problem that this causes. But I will link below where I got it because I want you guys to save money on your builds too. I ended up paying $16 for this thing, which is way, way cheaper than any other option on the market. Will it work? In theory it should, we'll find out. Installation on this thing is an absolute piece of cake. Behind your valve cover you'll find your O2 signal wire. On a 1.8 it will be a four wire, but you have to locate your signal wire, which I believe is blue. If you have a 1.6, it's just gonna be a single wire. That's the signal you're gonna intercept with the O2 signal modifier. So start by just chopping it. 
strip both ends. I actually picked up some of these fancy blade connectors so I can plug and unplug the signal modifier. Just go ahead and carefully solder it up. I kind of like to go to the next level of safety, wrap the blade connector with shrink wrap. And then just hook up your connections. It doesn't matter which one goes where because it's just a switch, it's not polarized. You just want to be sure if you're using this unit specifically that you use the right blades. Now the last step will be hooking a vacuum line up from this port right here to, you could do the intake manifold, but I'm going to do the intercooler piping because I don't know if this switch is designed to see vacuum and the intercooler piping will only be either atmosphere or boost. So I'm going to go ahead and use the intercooler piping, hook it up to that, and then find a clever way to mount that thing so it's clean. Now there's really no way to test the drivability of this thing with no turbo on it, but I can kind of do a fake test. I'll show you how to do it. So there's our AFR gauge, and you can see right now it's in closed loop. It's targeting 14.7 to 1 AFR. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go blow into that port, simulating boost, and see what happens to our air-to-fuel ratio. Very simple, yet super effective and important. And I'm excited that that thing works perfectly. I mean, I thought it would, but I really tested before the video to make sure. Works perfect, that's awesome. There are a couple more preparation things we have to do in order to run Boost on the stock ECU. I'll get into fueling in the next video. And I just wanna get all this little stuff taken care of so I can hurry up and fit the turbo on there. I just wanna see how it looks. It's just exciting seeing it in the bay bolted on. So I'm gonna try to hurry up and get through the rest of this stuff. We're gonna get that turbo fitted on there and we're just gonna get boosted. Who's excited? I'm excited about getting boosted. I hope you are. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the content. I'll see you in the next one. This is episode 10 of Broke and Ice Cream Man.